This is The Scoop for Thursday. I'm Lisa Marzilli with the WMNF News Headlines. A federal judge yesterday temporarily blocked the enforcement of a Florida law that makes it a felony to transport immigrants without permanent legal status into the state. The law has already resulted in the arrest of migrants who are now facing smuggling charges. Judge Roy Altman, a Trump appointee, blocked the law due in part to the irreparable injury plaintiffs would suffer due to family separation. The plaintiff, an Apopka-based group that advocates for nearly 12,000 Florida farm workers, said in a sworn statement that it estimated that about 100 member families that left at the end of harvest season in May of 2023 would not be returning to Florida to avoid the risk of being charged with a felony. The state's attorney's office has dropped all charges against a Lakeland man who was beaten while he was being arrested. WMNF's Chris Young reports activists want the police who were involved to be arrested. Antoine Glover was stopped during a traffic stop in Lakeland for not wearing a seatbelt. Officers saw marijuana in his car and pulled him from the vehicle. Video of the arrest showed an officer apparently punching Glover. Members of the Tampa Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression have been advocating for Glover's release for months. But they're not satisfied with last week's ruling clearing Glover of charges. Val Barron is an organizer with the group. I mean, we're really happy that the charges were dropped and we're happy that Antoine gets to stay with his family. And we're happy that we were able to see a little bit of justice here. But I think we won't really be satisfied until... Uh, These four officers are off the streets. They joined another activist group to meet with the Lakeland city manager on May 20th to call for the firing of four police officers and the Lakeland chief of police. A police spokesperson said two of the officers involved are on administrative leave due to an unrelated investigation. There's a lot of people that have eyes on on these officers right now and these cases, and people are going to continue pushing And we're going to continue pushing until these officers are off the streets. State Attorney Brian Hawes won't charge the officers. He says Glover posed a threat to them. The state attorney's office say Glover's charge of battery on a law enforcement officer could not, quote, be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young. New Florida laws require public sector unions to meet a rate of 60 percent dues paying members. WMNF's Jimmy Rosilio reports education unions feel targeted as they fight for recertification. On Friday, the Hillsborough Classroom Teaching Association turned in cards expressing that employees desire to maintain the union. An organization begins card collection after missing the 60% threshold. The campaign triggers a special election that would allow them to recertify and keep legitimacy while the process plays out. HCTA President Rob Crete says the government forces union organizers to jump through hoops. We see lawmakers that are doing every everything they can to create true obstacles that they want us to go away. They, they do not believe that the union is, is the voice of or should be the voice of the employees. The special election brings another round of voting. The Public Employees Relation Commission delivers these ballots, but local unions say they received nothing about when these forms might come. Crete says he feels like they're at the whim of Perk. They've only had very few, a handful of elections that have actually taken place across the state. So we don't know where we fall in that lineup. We don't have any communication with them saying, hey, we get expected to happen here or there. Across the Bay, the Pinellas Classroom Teachers Association says they also face radio silence from PERC about their ballots. The PCTA reports they handed in their card campaign on March 5th. For WMNF News, I'm Jimmy Rosilio. WMNF's Colleen Cole reports Pasco County Schools will be providing free meals to students this summer. Beginning on June 3rd, Pasco County Schools Summer Food Service Program will be providing breakfast and lunches Monday through Thursday to anyone 18 years old or younger. This service will be provided at select schools. Students attending place or extended school year programs at the school will receive their meals on campus while attending the program. Curbside meals will be provided as well. For more information and a list of schools, visit our website at WMNF.org. For WMNF News, I'm Colleen Cole. I'm Lisa Marzilli with the WMNF News Headlines. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.